dividing by decimals less than 1 is a little bit different than dividing by decimals that are greater than 1. And before we actually do an example, we're just going to talk about what it actually means. So we've got this example of 6 divided by 0 decimal 5 or 5 tenths. And we're going to just talk for a minute about what it means when you're dividing. So when we're dividing by numbers less than 1, it means we're looking at fractions of the number or parts of the number and how many parts there are in that total. So in this case, we're looking at six items and we want to find out how many decimal five parts there are in six. Normally when you divide a number like six, when you divide it by a number greater than one, you end up with something less than six. So if you divide six by two, you end up with three. But when you're dividing by a fraction of a part or a number less than one, you're going to see that you end up with a number that is actually greater than what you started with, even though you're dividing. So here we have six items. What we need to do is divide those items into five tenths. Now five tenths is the equivalent of half. So we're going to divide those items into halves. Not into half, but into halves. So each item we're going to divide into 0.5. So we've got six. We divide them into halves, and we end up with something like this. So if we divide each into ha halves, you can see that we've how many we now have. We have 12. So if we take 6 and divide it by decimal 5, or 5 tenths, or 1 half, we end up with 12 parts, 12 sections. So you can see that when you divide by a number less than 1, you're actually going to end up with a result greater than what you started with. Now let's calculate this and see how this turns out. So we use the same methods we did before, where we can um, just divide it with, whoops, divide it without any um, decimals. 5 divided into 6 is going to go one time. Now we're going to add zeros. 5 into 10 is 2. Okay, so you can see that we end up with an answer of 12. Now I'm just going to do the same division question with the decimals. So we have decimal 5 into 6. We move the decimal place over, so we have to move the decimal place over here. 5 into 6 is 1, and we end up with the same result. So you can see that when we take 6 and divide it by a number less than 1, our result is greater than the 6 we started with because we're finding fractional parts to the number. I'll just show you another example. Here we have 38 and 1 tenth divided by 3 tenths. So again, when we're estimating, it's like saying we have 38 things and we divide them all into 3 tenths, or this is approximately a third. So we have, let's just do our calculations now. So we're going to divide 3 into 381. 3 into 3 goes one time, come down to 8, 2, 3 times 3 is 6, come down to 2, or sorry, subtract, you get 2, bring down the 1, and then we have 7. Now let's do it with our decimal places. So we started with decimal 3, dividing into 38 decimal 1, we move the decimal place over. We move the decimal place over and we bring it up. And 3 into 3 is 1. 3 into 8 is going to go 2 times, and I'm going to end up with 7 there. So my answer is 127. So when I take 38 decimal 1 and divide it by 3 tenths, my answer is 127. And one way to, to estimate that is to think about the fact that if you're dividing it, the opposite operation is multiplying. So I know that this is around a third. 
3 tenths is around 1 third. So 38 times 3 is going to be around this number. Just like when I had 6 divided by decimal 0, 5 back here, this is about a half. So 6 times a half, 6 times 2 I should say, would be 12. So that's how I'm estimating my answer. So whenever you're multiplying by a number less than 1, or sorry, dividing by a number, decimal number less than 1, you're going to end up with a number that's greater than what you started with.